Will AI replace everybody in the creative field? Should I be afraid? Today we'll talk a bit about how AI technology has evolved so much it turned into a mixture of anger and fear for most people. Fear of the new is not unheard of. When the telephone was first invented, people were afraid of it because they thought that the contents of the lines would spill out in some way if there was a break. Many elderly persons refused to touch a telephone for fear of electrical shock. There was even a fear that the telephone was in some way able to attract evil spirits, or at least thunder and lightning. Of course, all of these sounds ridiculous nowadays, but in 1876 it was a real concern. It's very natural for people to be afraid of the unknown. AI is sometimes not understood by their own creators because of something called black box. That's when the user doesn't know how the AI arrived at its decision. The AI learns and develops independently through machine learning. If you ever got weird results while playing with chat GPT, it's because of this. This is also called hallucination. However, before we start a war against the machines, I want to share my opinion on why AI is actually a good thing for us the creatives. In my opinion, AI is just a tool, and like every other tool, it can be used to enhance our work. AI doesn't do anything on its own. It's not literally alive or even actually intelligent. It's just a piece of software. We need to tell it to do something. Saying AI is inherently bad is like saying a hammer is inherently bad. They are both tools. You can build a house with a hammer and nails, or hit someone with it. It's not the tool's fault if the user misuses it. This includes deep fakes of political figures for propaganda, deep fakes of famous streamers for adult content, and so on. The human is responsible for for what they create with the tool. Before we continue, I need to address the misconception that AI art is just an advanced copy-paste machine. It is not. It learns the intricate details of whatever subject it's working on. If you're generating brand new images, what AI is doing is basically imagining like you would. If you ask for a picture of a surfing elephant, it would take what it understands and perceives as surfing an elephant and think of an image with them, like we do as humans when using reference. The difference is that the AI did not need years of training to do that. I will leave a great video down in the description that explains this in much more depth than what I'm doing here. What people are rightfully complaining about is that their art was used in the AI database without their consent. I honestly do not believe this will ever change, as pretty much everything on the internet either is already on a database or it will go there eventually. I'm mainly discussing here what we can do right now as an artist. AI is here to stay and we need to adapt to it the best we can. If we don't, someone else will. Are you a concept artist and got really scared of AI art? Instead of trying to bash it out of your workflow, try to use it as an advantage. Instead of spending two hours on a sketch, tell it to do 50 sketches. Pick one that best fits your vision and go from there, either using in paint tools for the AI to keep working on it, or you manually finalize it. Never forget you are the artist. What matters is what you want to bring to the screen and your expertise on how stuff should look and feel. This process allows for more experimentation and you are much more free artistically to decide what to keep and what to lose. The client will also really enjoy having returns in 20 minutes instead of two hours. This is especially important for people working in the industry. If you're starting out your artist career, don't stop because of AI. The more you learn, the better artist you'll become. Knowledge is never useless. This goes for other artistic areas as well. If if you're a musician. With AI you can visually express what your songs are saying. If you're into filmmaking, you might not even need a green screen anymore, AI can do the key. AI simply saves a ton of time for actual artists and allow non-artists to have some fun creating stuff. We as artists and designers pour our heart and soul into this. But not everyone can be it because they are already doing that in another area or simply don't want to devote the time for it. For an actual example, this whole video is done with an AI voice from the script. I've trained the model with my voice so we can just type a script instead of having to Reddit. This saves me a lot of time. The AI never misses a word and usually pronounces things correctly as well. I can even change the type of voice. This one is one of the defaults that comes with Descript. The telephone part was written by Bing's chat and I verified the sources for it. Use it as a tool to improve your workflow. That's the main takeaway here. Are you an environment artist? Use it to create reference tailored to your needs. How often do you find reference images for a special place? Use it to create textures. Vipoli.com uses AI to generate PBR materials to use in 3D software. Use it to make voiceovers for YouTube videos like this one. Always remember, bad art can still be generated with AI, regardless of how good the AI is. The human is the one controlling it. It's like having a really fast car in a race. It does no good if you can't drive. I feel like if you as the artist don't incorporate these tools into your workflow, others will and you will be left behind. But I can be wrong, it's all very uncertain right now. Tell me in the comments down below if you think I'm wrong. And what should we all do? Or if you think I'm right, tell me how you'll implement AI into your work. If you want to have this discussion in a faster way, check out our Discord down below next to the like and subscribe button. As always, this is Sam from 3D here and I'll see you next time. Bye.